Hello everybody and welcome to the results video of the big James Bond survey 2021. My chief analysts and I have gathered the results for you. We get right to it. It's interesting. <laughs> And here I am, back in the operations centre with all the relevant data in front of me. Of the Big James Bond survey 2021, I collected 309 responses from countries across the globe, Bond fans across the globe. Uh, but I must say, in the second half and third half of the survey, the answers got lower. So the responses got lower. We were in an area of 140 to 170 responses per question. But still, there will be a result. And as I said before, it's quite interesting. So we had several sections uh, to answer. There was the section of brand perception, where I asked you the question, how do you like the official website, the official Facebook and Twitter and YouTube? And then a big section about no time to die, as well as classic elements of the Bond films and the usual questions we all know. So let's dive right in. When asked um, about the official website 007.com and how you would rate it as a fan, we had a scale of 0 to 10 for the social media questions and for the brand perception questions, ranging from extremely poor, that's 0, to extremely good, that's a 10. And with the official website 007.com, we had 267 responses in total and a weighted average of 6.8. 8, 8 out of 10. So only three people rated the official website with zero points, meaning extremely poor, um, and 26 rated it with a straight 10 for extremely good. The bulk of the answers is at number seven with 60. So the official website fares quite good in the opinion of the fans. And when you were asked what could be improved at the official website, I filtered some of the results because many of the things you put in the comment section were named more than once. So here are the filtered results. 27 people answered they want more behind the scenes footage, while 19 people said they want more up-to-date news, 15 people want more content from the archives, 13 asked for a better look and structure of the website. 11 people answered they want more engagement with the fan community. And 10 people want more a cast and crew profiles. Again, this was collected from the individual comment responses. To go a little bit more into detail, I have filtered out uh, some comments that I thought interesting. Uh, for example, one of you commented, the website needs a more organized structure of everything involved with the Bond movies and fans should not be doing a better job than Eon Productions. That is quite true. We have a lot of fan sites that provide a lot of content. So actually, as a brand owner, I would ask myself, okay, why do I have to put so much of my own content into my official website when all the other websites are doing it. Uh, fair point, but still, as the official outlet, it's also my opinion that you should put out more and certainly high quality content. Another uh, fan commented, the site's very bare boned and aside from a few articles that I may be interested in, there's no reason for me to visit it due to the lack of content. For a 60 year franchise, I'd expect more similar to Star Wars or Star Trek uh, and what they have available for fans. There's also a lack of merchandise for sale, especially in the US. Again, these are comments from you, the fans. Um, I added nothing. I read them to you as they are. I marked another comment. Uh, the items in the store are a joke. The content is outdone in many ways by fan videos on YouTube. Again, we have a lot of social media pages and a lot of fan pages that deal with Bond and that offer videos and images and articles. So that's what this comment refers to. Another comment says, and that's quite a funny one, uh, admitting horrible decisions like the slide whistle, California girls and surfing a tsunami. Okay, um, that is optional. 
for Eon Productions to admit that they made a, a, a mistake there with the slide whistle, you know, the man with the golden gun. Um, California girls and surfing a tsunami, uh, surfing a tsunami obviously is die another day. Um, I don't know if as a brand owner you should admit that you made a mistake there, but well, for some it's a mistake, for some it isn't. Another comment, perhaps more interaction with the fan base and competitions. It would also be nice to see more affordable items instead of continuous partnerships with brands that are extremely pricey. That refers to the official merchandise shop, which we will come to in a minute. And um, another comment I have selected here, let me just find it, marked it all with an X. But it's, it's a really large comment section, um, so I'm really glad that you voiced your opinion here, what you would like to see improved, because maybe somebody at Ian Productions will see this video and say, hey, okay, there's, there's room for improvement and we can do something. Another comment says, post storyboards, deleted scenes, scripts, concept art, more communication about 126, article with other things that fans already know, unpublished images, press releases that are not two lines long with a bland commentary. Um, it is true and it's also my opinion that uh, a lot of the official Bond website is mainly visual content and not so much um, yeah, interactive and no quizzes, no competitions. That would make the site a lot more lively. Let's move on to Facebook and the official James Bond Facebook page. Again, I gave you the opportunity to rate it from 0 to 10. 0 meaning extremely poor, 10 meaning extremely good. And also here, just like 007.com, we have a weighted average of 6.74 out of 10. So the, the official Facebook page is fairly well rated. Um, zero people gave it a zero. 23 people rated it 10 out of 10. And again, we have the bulk at seven. 45 people answered seven out of 10. Again, here you had the option to comment what you would like improved at the official Facebook page. Uh, but before that, I filtered some of the results that came up more than once. 11 people want more behind the scenes footage, while 10 wish for more interactivity. Nine people want more up-to-date news and more content from the archives. Six people asked for more engagement with the fan community and four said preserve the 007 legacy. This is collected from individual comment responses that you provide. Now let's go back into the comments and again I read the comments as you wrote them. I will add nothing, I will leave nothing out. Uh, one person wrote, I want more daily content with guest presenters, more interactivity. Absolutely. Facebook is the thing to go for interactivity. Another comment says, more storyboards, rare photos from the production of the James Bond films, contests, shout out to Bond fans who really contribute to the Bond universe, more Fleming book content and less clothing and accessories brand ads. So again, you have a lot of voices that like more interactivity with the fan community, which would be good on Facebook because a lot of them are on Facebook. Another comment says, less simple clips from the films and more behind the scenes stuff. Absolutely, that would be really, really nice. Another comment says, the official Bond social media pages are all lacking in engaging content. They don't make any effort to capture the interests of fans. Again, these are your opinions and nothing is added, nothing is left out. Another user answering the survey said, Facebook is dead as an interactive platform. Content should all be visual and channeled through YouTube. All you can really do is link to YouTube. Hard to differentiate a great Facebook page from an average one these days. Okay, so this user clearly prefers YouTube, which is a really, really great platform. Now, moving on to the official Twitter page of the James Bond franchise or Ian Productions again. On a scale of 0 to 10, we have a weighted average of 6 0.04 out of 10. So the official Twitter page doesn't rate that well. 161 responses were given and again 35 people chose number 7 with only 14 choosing 10 points out of 10. 6 people rated it 0 
out of 10. So Twitter absolutely needs some improvement. The improvement you would like to have I again filtered into these results. 19 people wish for more engagement with the fan community, which is great because it's Twitter and you could do that. 10 people wish for more up-to-date news. 7 people answered preserve the 007 legacy. 6 people want more content from the archives. 5 people want more behind the scenes footage and 4 commented that they wish for more interactivity. And looking back at the comments again, one user said, I would like to see less memes and ads for nonsense merchandise and more actual content. They should only post when they have something of value to offer. That's what I basically do. <laughs> uh, I post only when I have something interesting to post. That's why I post less. Another user said, faster reaction to current affairs, partnerships with other brands, and fan community content providers. Again, a lot of comments refer to more fan interaction or interaction with the fan community because we are all on social media or have our own website that we can connect with Facebook, Twitter or YouTube. Another comment says, contests would be fun. The updates are alright, though they sometimes try really hard to hop on a trend or a hashtag that can only be very loosely connected to Bond and those posts come across as a bit cringe. I wouldn't mind more fan interaction, shout outs to fan art or just general retweets. Very good. Another one, quite long comment, but that's good. I really like that you made the effort and type long comments in there That's because it's really helpful. I would love to see official James Bond fan gatherings, Q&As, events, celebrations of past and present. It's just today, it's very quiet and not like other big franchises in terms of reaching out to fans and have projects to look forward to in between films, either novels, comics or video games, etc. And also, I think, it will be a great way of generating new fans, like with the video games in the 90s and 2000s. Don't make James Bond woke. This is actually something uh, that popped up a lot in the comments. Don't make James Bond woke. And the final comment on uh, the Twitter page. It is too generic. The content is not really engaging. This is your opinion as the fans. And um, every good brand, I think, should listen to uh, these reactions to their official outlets like Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Now, moving on to the official 007 merchandise shop. This is something that uh, has been talked about a lot. A lot of people complain that the products on the 007 merchandise shop are way too expensive and only if you have a lot of money you can afford them. So let's see how the official shop fares on a scale of 0 to 10. From extremely poor to extremely good, we had one person answering extremely poor with a 0. 16 people rating the official merchandise shop with 10 out of 10 and again 43 with a solid 7. That gives us a weighted average of 6.3 out of 10 with 174 responses. So there are a few other questions attached to the 007 merchandise shop. For example this one here. I asked have you ordered products from the shop? Yes once, yes more than once or no never. 26% of those who answered the survey have ordered from the shop once, 30% more than once and 44% have never ordered anything. This was collected out of 187 responses. Another question with the 007 merchandise shop was if you found it very cheap or very expensive or easy or hard to navigate. Quite interesting results here, but the results that I expected, they were collected from 308 responses. So this question triggered a big response from you fans. 4% found the shop very cheap. These were seven responses, but 71% thought the shop was very expensive. 127 people answered that. 39% said it's easy to navigate and uh, hard to navigate 16%. I picked out quite a few comments here and a few long comments uh, starting with a person who wrote most Bond merchandise feels like it's made for boomers. 
wealthy boomers at that. It seems like Bond merchandise is either super expensive and impractical or a shitty little keychain. There's not much middle ground. And not a lot there excites me, to be honest. Why don't they sell the comics in there? Or reissue the games? Why doesn't Bond have a six-inch collectible toy line? It's pretty dire. Again, not my opinion. It's what you, the fans, wrote. In another comment, a person wrote, a bit more frugal options on the one hand, more sophisticated merchandise on the other. Not all the time your average puzzles and mugs. The Bond socks are a good example of how it can be done right. They are actually quite nice. I like them. Another comment. It's a very long comment. Uh, and again, I find it really, really good that you comment in that way. And I just hope that somebody at EM Productions sees that and says, yeah, okay, there's room for improvement. Nothing from shocking unrelated brands like Bella Freud or the lazy hoodie designs. So that's what the user does not want. Subtle jewellery pieces for ladies and gents. Collectible recreations of shooting scripts. 60th anniversary Blu-ray set with new extras and additional deleted or unused footage from Quantum of Solace, Die Another Day and others. For your eyes only, stationery, diary, Q branch briefcase from Russia with Love, Lego collaboration sets, novelization of Craig's Bond era, subtle fan clothing, in brackets a casual jacket with a poster print or movie inspired lining, and t-shirts with photos or production drawings of key locations. So that is what is requested. Eon, get on it. And another four comments that I have selected especially with the shop. There are a few and people really voice their opinion in quite a critical uh, but quite honest way. Another user commented, while the site does have some interesting products, most are far too expensive for the average fan. Additionally, there should be more products devoted to each film and all licensed items should be available on the site for less money than they can be ordered on Amazon with free shipping as well. 007.com should be the go-to place for Bond items. Quality t-shirts and polo shirts would be of interest to me and the size range so should be expanded. Also, replicas of Bond's attire should be available but also affordable. Very good comment there, I like that. Uh, next comment. More extensive clothing options and less expensive options for certain things. The shop has, however, greatly improved in the past year or so. And it is improving at the moment. Some uh, articles, uh, some uh, products that I saw recently, I would buy. And the prices have become more affordable, but still, room for improvement. Like another user said, he wants affordable clothing options like a line of 007 wardrobe items instead of spending $700 on a jacket. And again, another user said more accessible products rather than high-end and expensive lifestyle type items. So the overall opinion of the people commenting was don't make these products just for the big wallet. Make something for people who have less money but still are Bond fans and would like to buy something. Again, another user wrote, the shop caters to fans looking for high-end products, like that ridiculously expensive backgammon set. That's a good example, actually. It's, I, I don't know why I would buy that. And another user had some wishes for the future. A bunch of film posters are missing. They used to have those. I'd love some t-shirts with artwork or quotes that are not ridiculously expensive. Things like puzzles or books are always fine. Some more replicas, perhaps. I do really like the pin badges. More of that would be great. Shipping costs are also quite high, by the way. So in addition to an expensive product, you have expensive shipping, depending on where you live. Um, I don't know if there are country-specific options, but I know I am in Germany. If I order an expensive product from the shop, let's say uh, 50 pounds or $100. I have shipping costs on top of that to Germany. So, and if you live, I don't know, in China or Japan or Thailand, th this can increase significantly. So, hmm. another user says the biggest issue is the website shop categories. It can be hard to locate the product. 
you're looking for with various highlight tips, etc. A greater variety of niche shirts would be good with various references that aren't publicly decipherable, such as the Drax logo shirt or San Monique. That was actually great because they, they are great uh, designs, really. And we fans don't have much option to um, have our own collections of that. So if, if there is a specific shirt missing from the merchandise shop, we cannot just print something 007 on it because it's all under copyright, obviously. Yeah. Um, what I did not ask about is Instagram. Just want to throw it in there because I simply forgot it. I'm terribly sorry. And it's, it's, it's just a visual medium for me. So I think you, you can't really do anything wrong there. I mean, if you post pictures, uh, if you don't like it, you scroll over it. If you like it, give it, give it a like. Um, but uh, I didn't think there was much room for improvement. Now, moving on to the official YouTube channel of James Bond. Again, you had a choice of 0 to 10 from extremely poor to extremely good. And with uh, 160 responses, we have a weighted average of 6.48. Again, number 7 is the number to go. 29 people rated it 7 out of 10. 23 rated it 10 out of 10. And only 2 rated it extremely poor, giving it 0 points. On the question what could be improved and the official YouTube channel, I just marked uh, a few responses from you in the comment section because they are uh, almost the same as in the Facebook section or the Twitter section. You want to see more behind the scenes stuff, more stuff from the archive. Uh, but here is a, a long comment that I would like to read to you because I found it interesting. One user wrote, it's so inconsistent. There was a period when they'd upload their social media posts of 20 seconds to the channel. Luckily, they stopped doing that. I think they found a thing that works with small film clips and, of course, the promotion for No Time to Die. But they haven't uploaded in three months. Really bugs me. And while we've heard some tidbits about No Time to Die and the Project 007 game in interviews on various news websites, how cool would it be if that information got released in video format on the 007 channel first? in an interview with actors, crew or game developers. I also don't really get why they stopped posting production vlogs videos for No Time to Die after the Jamaica video. But then again, the whole promotional campaign for No Time to Die went a bit south for obvious reasons. Yeah, so reading through all your comments, People are a bit tired of seeing little snippets of the Bond films. But again, the official YouTube channel, it has to apply to so many people, so many groups of fans, which includes new fans. So having small clips of the Bond films might trigger them to buy uh, the DVD set or the Blu-rays or see the next film. As a brand owner, you're always trying to juggle these individual groups of fans. So I can understand that it's hard to cater to everybody's needs. Yeah. Um, another user said, I would like to see more content. I like historical behind the scenes content from all aspects of Bond cars, locations, villains, but also Q and A's with stars, film crews, rankings, introduce new upcoming projects, just more content to put it simply. So, um, another user said, and that's uh, rather nice, um, where is it? More of the music. Get Q the music to do some performances for you. They are simply the best Bond tribute band out there. And that's actually true. <laughs> so, Eon Productions, if you want to pimp up your YouTube channel, get Q the music. Moving on from your perception of James Bond as a brand, we go to the hopefully upcoming James Bond film, No Time to Die. <laughs> hopefully upcoming because the situation around COVID-19 is still dramatic. And fingers crossed that in October we will all be sitting in the cinema watching our favorite hero save the day. Question number 13 threw us right into the No Time to Die section of the survey. And I asked you, I have actively consumed as much of the behind the scenes information as possible, where 66% answered with true and 34% answered with false, collected out of 179 responses. This shows us that there are actually some people who don't like to consume information and don't want to know anything about a new film. 
And that becomes extremely evident in the next question where I said, I try to stay away from any spoilers where 51% said, yes, true, I'm staying away from them. And 49% said, false. So you really have half and half collected out of 175 responses. And now we see, as I said at the beginning of the video, the responses are going down. They are now between 140 and 180, sometimes a bit higher. Um, you could answer all the questions. You could only answer questions that you liked. So that's why the responses are so mixed. Question number 14 asked you, if there were too many images and videos of the filming, 27% said true, there was too much, and 73% said false. They would have probably liked to see more. I like to see a lot of uh, information, videos and photos and articles about the latest film. I collect a lot of pictures, so yeah, it's really, really great to have. You want to stay on top, and I like spoilers, so absolutely. Moving on to cast and crew. These are the obvious questions. and. Question number 16 was, are you happy with Carrie Joji Fukunaga being the director of No Time to Die? 84%, that's a whopping 84%, are happy with Carrie Fukunaga as the director, whereas 16% don't support him and say he was the wrong choice, collected out of 175 responses. Are you happy with Hans Zimmer composing the music for No Time to Die? 73% are, 27% are not out of 167 responses. So Hans Zimmer has your backing, obviously. But what about Billie Eilish? Are you happy with Billie Eilish performing the title song, No Time to Die? 62% said true. And 38% said false. A little bit wider result, collected out of 175 responses. I personally uh, like the song. I was very critical of it. Um, when I heard it for the first time, but now it has grown on me and uh, it's, I really like it. Um, you could rate Billie Eilish's song, No Time To Die, on a scale of zero to 10. I always say, want to say one, but it's zero for extremely poor. To 10, extremely great, fantastic, wonderful. Uh, three people gave it a zero out of 10, whereas 22 people gave it straight 10 out of 10. Again, the magic number seven is the middle way with 30 people answering 7 out of 10, we have a weighted average of 6.42 out of 10, collected from 161 responses. Now, a little odd question was question number 20, where I said, are you glad that this will be Daniel Craig's final James Bond film? 54% said true, and 46% said false. It was also quite almost 50-50 out of 176 responses. So I think Daniel Craig's tenure is over also in your opinion. When asked what characters you are most looking forward to in No Time to Die, Daniel Craig comes out the strongest with 78% of the responses, followed by Rami Malek playing Safin with 64%. Ana de Armas, Ralph Fiennes and Jeffrey White share a 49% and our Gadget Master Q, Ben Wishaw, secures himself 32% of the responses, 833 in total. Next up, we have 39% for Lea Seydoux playing Madeleine Swan, 36% favour Naomi Harris playing Money Penny, Lashana Lynch as Nomi secures 32%, and Christoph Waltz as Blofeld, 30%. 26% of the responses looking forward to Rory Kinnear portraying Tanner, and both 11% Billy Magnuson as Logan Ash and David Danzig as Valdo Obruchev. 10% go to Dali Bensala portraying Primo. Again, these were compiled out of 833 responses in total. As we all know, No Time to Die got delayed several times, most of the times because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And not everybody was happy with that and with the communication in that area. So I asked you, the decision to delay No Time to Die because of COVID-19 was right. 78% said true, whereas 22% said false, collected out of 179 responses. So you are happy with the delay. But what about streaming? This is a topic everybody has talked about. And many people said Bond must be put on streaming. We want to see the film now. 
But do you really? No Time to Die should have been put on a streaming service. 32% said true, but 68% said false. Collected out of 173 responses, so no. For these 68%, Bond is still a cinema product and he needs to save the day on the silver screen. Which is also my opinion. How much would you have been willing to spend for streaming the film one time? 8% would have spent 5 to 10 US dollars, 22% would have spent 10 to 20, and 40 would have spent 20 to 30 US dollars. 32% would not have streamed the film at all. So, okay, it's quite expensive. 20 to 30 dollars, but okay. Bond is worth a lot to you. <laughs> Question number 25 asked, if you are happy to return to the cinema to see No Time to Die in October of this year, 2021, if all hygiene measures are in place. 89% said true, I will return to the cinema. 11% are playing it safe, I say no, I'm not going to the cinema. 169 responses were given here. Let's move on to the future of Bond. What happens after Daniel Craig? And I gave you a selection of possible actors and features that a new James Bond should have. And uh, this is a topic where everybody has quite a clear perception of how James Bond should be. And the first question where multiple answers were possible was how would you like your James Bond to be? Out of 191 responses, 26% would go for an unknown actor, while 53%, the largest number, would go for a relatively known actor, and 20% would favor a famous actor portraying James Bond. Asked if Bond should be British or American, the response was quite unanimous, out of 142 responses, 99% say he must be British, while 1%, two people out of 142, think he should be American. Out of 144 responses, 97% think James Bond must be male, while 3% say he could be female. Five responses out of 144. I asked you if you could imagine some actors portraying 007 after Daniel Craig has left. I gave you just some options. Some uh, have been in the news, some have been reported to uh, have been cast or <laughs> been approached to play James Bond. We, we don't know which of that is true. So uh, given the choice to pick a possible replacement for Daniel Craig, the result came out like this. Henry Cavill, famous for portraying Superman, takes a whopping 70% of your 235 responses. Nicholas Holt, known from X-Men, takes 30% of your votes. And Tom Hardy, star of Venom, Peaky Blinders and Legend, goes home with 23%. We're going lower with Twilight star Robert Pattinson taking 14% of your votes. Chiwetel Ejiofor of 12 Years a Slave gets 13% of your votes, and Christian Bale, famous for portraying Batman, 10%. Game of Thrones star Kid Harrington takes 10%, James McAvoy of X-Men and Split gets 9%, and Kevin McKidd, who some of you might know from Grey's Anatomy, takes also 9% of 235 responses in total. The next section, the future of the Bond films, had quite a different set of questions. We covered a possible new actor, but now I want to cover elements that should feature in a new James Bond film after Bond 25, No Time to Die. But I started with a question that triggered quite a few people to comment. Uh, I asked, in your opinion, do you think the Bond franchise is currently on a bad path? Not an easy question. You've quite have to think about it for some time, but there are a lot of discussions in that direction. 41% answered true and 59% answered 
false. This was collected out of our 175 responses and uh, it's very interesting to dive into the comments here because uh, a lot of people um, made lengthy comments about their true or false decision and let me just read some of you that I found really really interesting. One user answering the survey wrote too angsty and weepy and their attempts at world building and character development over multiple films have been laughably incoherent and obviously poorly thought out. So this is really, uh, uh, this was really good to voice uh, people's opinion um, and the question is quite hard if you ask for something being on a good or a bad path uh, because it's like a black and white question and we know the world is not just black and white but uh, it was supposed to be a trigger question uh, to get some comments in so I read some more to you that I selected another user wrote I have the impression Barbara Broccoli is losing interest in proceeding the franchise that could be we don't know another user said Bond is too woke and politically correct there's too much box ticking no decent Bond villain in all of the Craig movies. It's your perception. Uh, actually, box ticking and politically correct came up uh, several times in uh, the comment section. So uh, you are not happy with Bond being politically correct, uh, which would mean that we move back to, um, to the olden days <laughs> of Bond. Um, another user wrote, I've had it with all the personal stuff and revenge plots. I like the movies to go back to Bond getting a mission. I've had it with non-melodic scores that are disrespectful to Barry's legacy alongside these retro songs. I'm also pretty fed up with all the counter casting. Now both Lighter and Moneypenny are African Americans. Bond is blonde and the new Q looks way too young. I mean, does it really have to be so weird? Speaking of retro, I also found it to be a wrong decision to, br to bring Blofeld back. Not just because he seems misplaced in Craig's, in brackets, realistic Bond universe, but also because they turned him into Bond's half-brother. The plots also become thinner and thinner. I liked Craig's first two outings, unlike Skyfall and Spectre, where each barely had a side from all the homages paid to past Bond movies. So, quite a strong comment. Yeah? And again, I leave nothing out and I add nothing, except uh, names. Yeah? Um, another user wrote, I answered true to make the following observations. Bond should remain as he is in the original novels, white, male and with all of the flaws his character contains. Please do not soften or remove these elements in an effort to appease a politically correct or woke agenda. Bond is an imperfect character in an imperfect world. Let's not lose sight of that. There are many things that can be done to reflect diversity in society, but that does not have to include changing Bond. Interesting comment there. Yeah, I like that a lot. Another user wrote, there's much ambiguity about the franchise's future after No Time to Die. Rumours this may be the end of the Bond franchise with Lashana Lynch's character taking over as 007. Even with the pandemic delays, there's no indication the franchise will continue with the character of James Bond. Another comment I marked was a user writing, while this series has been undoubtedly successful in the Daniel Craig era, and while I have become used to Daniel Craig as 007, I still think that rebooting the series was a mistake, which was, kind of, sort of rectified with the last few minutes of Skyfall. I'm also disappointed that ripping off the Bond parody Austin Powers and making Blofeld's Bond foster brother of sorts was a huge waste of the character and Spectre. The post-Craig era should basically ignore the reboot and basically pick up in continuity after Die Another Day. If all the parts need to be recast, fine, but they should all be Bernard Lee, Lewis Maxwell, Desmond Llewellyn, Michael Kitchen, David Hedison types, with an actor who looks like Bond more than Daniel Craig. While his shorter hair makes the blonde look easier to take, it should be as much 
as a deviation as possible and Bond must be British or from a Commonwealth country. So quite an extensive comment there. Uh, quite good opinions that you have. Some I agree with, some I don't agree with, but okay. Another user wrote, there's too much time between movies. They feel like they're trying to poorly to play the current trend in brackets. Everything's connected, so Dr. Evil is his brother. Bond needs his team, but only goes rogue. Instead of being the trendsetter they are supposed to be. Bond is meant to be a flat arc character. You don't have to put him through meaningless changes. These movies are supposed to be fun. I agree with that. Another user wrote, Bond films too broody, needs to get back to fun romp. Actually, that's what I always say. Like Roger Moore once said, two hours of good fun and entertainment, that's what people go to the cinema for when, you, when they want to watch a Bond film. Another user suggested they need to get away from MGM. New creative blood needs to be added to the production side. And uh, yeah, there are a few more comments coming because I really like them. Um, let's see what I have here. Way too many unnecessary gaps and delays between movies. The franchise needs a figurehead and showrunner who is dedicated to Bond and Bond only, with no distractions in the way. With Michael G. Wilson on the verge of retirement, Barbara Broccoli is not that dedicated producer if her objective is to do her little art house movies and theatre projects on the side. I wish her luck if awards recognition is what she aims for. That is not the producer the Bond franchise needs, but one who is fixated and focused squarely on James Bond. Quite a criticism towards Barbara Broccoli there. Again, it's personal opinions of the people who filled out the survey, who commented on the survey. It is not my opinion, but every opinion should be heard. Another user's opinion is the Bond franchise is not on a bad path, but the lack of productivity compared to the series history is troubling. When the films were released on regular intervals, Bond flowed with the times more naturally. Longer gaps create the need to catch up or reinvent itself whenever a film is made. That shouldn't be the case. Bond should be a constant presence in cinema, not a rare event. That is a comment I really like because I'm absolutely on the same page here. Bond should be a regular and constant presence in cinema. Another user said, I would like to see the franchise return to more traditional roots in terms of Bond doing his job for Queen and Country. And mostly standalone stories and not obsessed in trying to create a continuous arc like in the Craig era. I would love to see them return making the films that deliver escapism, fun, while keeping in terms of reality and believability, and finally, unapologetically British. Nicely written, really. Another user says, the gaps between movies are far too large and historically unprecedented without a change of the Bond actor. The audience lose feeling and momentum about the Craig Bond story when it is four plus years between each installment. Furthermore, the Spectre plot was terrible. The priority of any Bond movie has to be the story. The budget and action is made almost meaningless without a strong narrative which connects with the audience such as From Russia With Love, Goldeneye or Casino Royale. Also, good statement. Another user said, need more frequency of films. Two films in a decade is not going to bring in new fans. Older fans stay loyal, but it is a crowded marketplace for attention. Absolutely, I agree with that. Everybody loves the Aston Martin DB5. It's a great car to see, uh, to have, <laughs> to drive. Uh, but I asked you if you think that the Aston Martin DB5 has been overused, especially in recent films. And 66% of 94 responses said yes, it is overused, while 34% say no, it is not overused. 31% out of 39 responses think the Aston Martin DB5 should feature more in the Bond films and 69% say it should feature less. Now, in the comments before, we had a lot of people writing uh, there needs to be less political correctness. One topic that is much talked about was should the term Bond girl be changed to Bond lady or Bond woman? 
And a 25% of those who answered the survey said, yes, it should be changed. And 75% said, no, it shouldn't. That was collected out of 171 responses. So 129 of you said, no, there should be no change. And it's too politically correct for me. Would you like the James Bond theme to have more presence in the film score? Three possible answers. 49% said yes, definitely. 5% said no, definitely not. And 46% said only if something Bond typical happens. We especially know that from the Bond games because there was always a, a Bond theme moment when you did something Bond typical. Um, my personal opinion is um, only if something Bond typical happens, I think. Yeah, because it makes it all much more <laughs> exciting. The next set of questions dealt with the franchise and its impact and I asked you to evaluate a few aspects of the franchise where the first question is sort of a follow-up question to uh, the one we had before if the franchise is on a good or bad path and I asked you if you think that the franchise and legacy of Bond is in good hands with producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson. Our scale has changed a bit from 0 to 10. It is now 0 strongly disagree and 10 strongly agree. Uh, out of 163 responses we have a weighted average of 7.76 out of 10 with 47 people putting their trust in Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson and giving it a 10 out of 10. Two people rated it 0 out of 10 so they strongly disagree and uh, 26 people gave it the magic number 7. 31 number 8 and 25 number 9 out of 10. So quite a varied result. The recent films have too much product placement. How is that in your opinion? Do you agree or do you disagree? Seven people answered strongly disagree with 0 out of 10. Seven people answered with 10 out of 10 and 33 took the golden middle of 5. So that looks like a lot of them were unsure. We have a weighted average of 4.86 out of 10 with a 148 responses. Now, asked about the advertisement around the world and if you think if the films are well advertised around the world. There was a solid 8 reflecting 48 people. Uh, 39 rated it 10 out of 10, so they strongly agree that the films are well advertised. We have a weighted average of 7.85 out of 10, which is a fairly good result, uh, compiled from 163 responses. Now, an interesting question was put to you when I asked if you feel that the people behind the films value the opinion of the fans, which many franchises do that. Again, on a scale from 0 strongly disagree to 10 strongly agree, we have 26 people giving it a straight 10 out of 10. So you feel that um, the fans are valued. We have a weighted average of 6.14 out of 10, collected from 157 responses. Uh, 25 rated the middle, 5 out of 10. While 18 gave it an 8 out of 10 and 25 a 7 out of 10. Quite broad results here. Um, the question, if you think that the people behind the films should involve fans more in their product, got a quite strong response. Uh, 25 people strongly agree that the fans should be involved more. Five strongly disagree, giving a 0 out of 10. We have a weighted average of 6.33 out of 10 with 159 responses. Um, and the answers range from 5 out of 10 to 10 out of 10. So you are in the, in the second half of the scale, in the wide half of the scale, um, generally thinking that fans should get a bit more involvement in the franchise. And now we come to a set of questions which is very interesting and dear to my heart, the global James Bond fan community. Uh, and before we go into the results, I actually have to say sorry because on that one question where you could select multiple answers of which Bond content creators you follow, I did not put all the Bond sites in there, all the fan sites, uh, because there are 
tons of them, really, really good ones. And this would have been a clickable question spanning several pages. So I didn't want you to <laughs> go through that. Um, I just put some websites in there that I think that are on the top of their game and are present everywhere on social media, on their own website, uh, whatever, and uh, where I see a lot of on a day-to-day -day basis. I agree, it should have been more. I overlooked some and I hope you can forgive me but okay, I collected the results and they are quite amazing. And actually they are, they turned out as I thought they would. But uh, let's start with the first question where I asked you if you enjoy being a part of the global James Bond fan community. And a whopping 98% enjoy it very much. And 2% uh, don't enjoy being a part of the global James Bond fan community. Why not? 164 responses and there was a comment section as well. A very interesting comment section. I marked a lot of comments which I would like to read to you again. I left nothing out and I add nothing. So I read them to you as they were posted under the question. There was one user who had like and dislike separation. Like, the Bond fandom gets along shockingly well with each other and has a level of sincerity and genuine passion for their franchise that isn't really matched by any other fandom. Dislike. The fandom school's very old, which I'm not blaming anyone for, except Eon. They've done an appallingly bad job at appealing to anyone that isn't 40 or older. At 34, I feel like one of the young guys in the fandom, and that's a huge problem. Also, this is more of a minor pet peeve but it's annoying how the entire Bond fan community seems pathologically incapable of producing a single podcast that sticks to any sort of regular schedule. Okay, there's room for improvement there. Uh, another commentator said, overall I think the community is friendly and welcoming. This uh, was actually posted several times. The majority of comments uh, was about the friendship, the camaraderie, of uh, the James Bond fan community. Another user said, there are a significant number of so-called James Bond fans who actually believe that the Daniel Craig era has something valuable to offer. It doesn't. Well, again, these are your opinions, not my opinions. Uh, add nothing. I uh, subtracted nothing. Add nothing. So that's purely, that's the pure comment section. Another user said, I dislike the inherent racism and lack of willingness for the franchise to evolve that I find in the comments of various outlets. I guess that's just the internet in general though. Absolutely right. Another user writes, love to share info on bond locations and filming. Absolutely hate misogyny and racism that some fans show of regular in discussions. Okay. It's absolutely true and on the internet you have a lot of uh, trolling obviously and a lot of fans who have yeah some some have strange opinions and I don't know where they're coming from but okay I read through that I think nothing of it and um, continuing with your comments in the survey another user wrote the most common thing in the community is that some members not everyone but some don't let others have their opinion about certain aspects about the Bond franchise more acceptance of opinions would be great, less misconception, and everyone is happy. Everyone should be allowed to have their opinions about certain things in the community without getting mocked or yelled at if the opinion is different. Uh, that is something I um, absolutely share. Um, nobody should be mocked. If you like uh, Daniel Craig uh, over Timothy Dalton, if you think Sean Connery was bad as Bond, well, that is your opinion it's fine. Um, for example, I don't like Dr. No much, the whole film in general. So, but I have not been mocked about my opinion. Um, I hope I won't be now, but okay. The comments under my videos are disabled for exactly that kind of reason, because you get mocked a lot on the internet. It is the internet. Another user complained that there are too much offerings to follow. Would love to see specialists on things versus too many people trying to do the same thing. And do I really need to spend time listening to inside jokes and banter? Give me properly constructed information, less opinion. Okay, absolutely. 
Another user said, different types of people from different countries enjoying the same thing. Absolutely on the same page here. And making new friends that share the same passions and have something to talk about. Another user said, it's embarrassing that rich fans often try to recreate the lifestyle of James Bond. It is even more questionable to applaud this. Quite strong opinion there. This comment section has quite strong opinions. That's why uh, this fan community uh, tab of the survey was so important to me because I just wanted to get a general overview of what people really think. Another user said, I like the kindness and support of everyone in the community as well as, well as making some good friends. Strong supportive camaraderie. Again, good point. It's a fabulous community to be part of and I enjoy the content from contributors. Some fans can be less tolerant of those who don't agree with their opinions, but that happens in any fandom, and it happens in real life, actually. Another user complained of self-appointed influencers and supposed experts pushing their status as such. Okay. I guess everybody of us has to think about how we are perceived by other fans. I know I do, but, uh, well, I hope I'm doing a decent job. I don't know. Uh, another user said there's always a nuance or another way to look at James Bond as a franchise and all it offers. Different perspectives and ideas keep the magic alive. And I think the, the fans keep the magic alive and keep the, the legacy of Bond alive. Another user commented there are too many white men who think they're more important than they are. Whatever you mean by that. Um, however, the next comment uh, said too much bigotry and male fragility. I can understand that in, in some uh, some aspect. Uh, another user praised the whole togetherness of the James Bond community. Absolutely. And since COVID started I've been thrilled to discover YouTube channels, Facebook and Twitter pages and other sites devoted to all aspects of fandom. Everyone has been extremely welcoming and allows all to gather information, celebrate one magnificent character and his legacy. I cannot think of anything I dislike about the fan community. It's really good. And another user said, they fill the void left by the creators in the conversation. Now, there's a, there's a huge com comment coming up. It's quite a long one uh, and um, uh, a good one, a very important one. It's a really unique community. Majority of people know who and what is James Bond. Everyone likes the character and the franchise and disliking of things is allowed. I don't think that the community is toxic or whatever. It's a good community with good people of different backgrounds and all of them agree on things. I feel that liking or not liking certain movies is still fine and you can think a certain movie is overrated or underrated without being attacked for it. The people in general seem smart and good too. It really is a good community and I feel agreeing with the people in general or at least I get their different viewpoints because like I said most of the people are intelligent and well-spoken. Great community. That is a comment I, I really like very much because that's what I heard in personal discussions as well. People highlighting these aspects of the community. Uh, uh, next one. What do I have? I have all of that as a PDF, <laughs> so I have to scroll through that. There are some incredibly talent content creators who keep Bond fans engaged. Absolutely, and we will come to that in a minute. Another user praised the bonding and shared passions and the alcohol. <laughs> okay, that's a thing to like, <laughs> if you're into that. Uh, the sense of connectivity, also for those that live further away from places where events take place. Insightful discussions, polls and watch parties and just the plain silliness sometimes are all things I greatly enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. We do a lot, don't we? And here's a comment directly aimed at David Zeritsky. David Zeritsky basically taught me how to dress properly, in brackets, like Bond. And it completely changed my life and career for the better. I've been watching Bond films since I was a boy, but David's remarkable passion for the franchise infected me and caused me to truly love Bond and everything about the Bond experience. That man is truly a treasure to the Bond community and frankly, an asset to the franchise. Well, Barbara Broccoli? Hire David Zaritsky and cue the music, obviously. 
To me, the James Bond fan community is the polite and civilized, even with differing opinions, we all united in our love for 007. It would be a staggering, bad creative decision from filmmakers to break that, to which I hope they'll never do. No, they won't. Another user said, too many people who think that Daniel Craig is the greatest Bond ever, purely because they are too young to have experienced any of the others, unless through nostalgia. Too many people who won't hear a word said against the Bond franchise. There are far too many people who insist that Bond should be white and male. Even in your questionnaire, there were no females in your list of who you might wish to see as the next James Bond. That's true, actually. I thought of putting a woman in there, I thought of putting Gillian Anderson in there. But then I thought of my own perception of who Bond is, and I just think Bond is male. I don't want a female James Bond. I put it out there, that's, that's my opinion, and I am entitled to it. Thank God. Another user said, made a, uh, a ton of awesome new friends. And another user said, some can be too negative about aspects of the franchise. We all have opinions, but we must be respectful of each other. That's absolutely true. And this was the comment section on the Bond fan community. And now we come to that question where I said sorry before uh, of not putting all the Bond fan sites in there. What Bond content creators do you actively follow? Let's look at the result. So here you see the number of people actually following a specific content creators. It's not percent, it's the number of people who responded in this survey. 84 people follow David Zaritsky of the Bond experience and he leads this chart followed by Calvin Dyson. 62 people actively follow him and his YouTube channel. Joe Darlington of Being James Bond has 56 trusty followers. MI6HQ brings it to 53. The guys of James Bond Radio take 44. Q the Music Show, fabulous tribute band, 39. The James Bond Dossier, 37 people. From Taylors with Love, James Bond Lifestyle, run by Raymond von Brahm and on the tracks of 007 by Martin Mulder, all have 31 followers who answered the survey. And there's me, the Bond Bulletin, with 23. Oh, I should do more. I need more followers. <laughs> and Commander Bond Net with 22. This is based on 865 total responses, but there will be more, the ones that I forgot. So here you have the collected results based on 47 responses from the other category where you could type Bond sites that you follow. And I compiled them together according to how often they were mentioned. Nine people actively follow bondsuits.com, five follow the spy command, and two people each follow the double O files, quantum of history, James Bond television, the Bond armory, the Bond brain, dressing like Bond, license to critique, James Bonding podcast, Bond and Beyond, as well as the another James Bond podcast. Now, this would have been much more representative uh, if I had put them into the other category where you could actually click them. But, okay, kudos to all of you. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. There was also the question, if you are a member of a James Bond fan club. I picked the biggest ones uh, that everybody knows. 42% uh, are a member of the International James Bond Fan Club. 38% are members of the James Bond Club Germany. 27 of the James Bond Club Switzerland. And 23 of the James Bond Club France. Now, speaking about things that could happen but haven't, would you be interested to take part in a James Bond convention if such an event existed? 93% answered true, 8% answered false, 106 responses. And do you feel the Global Bond fan community is actively supported and appreciated by the James Bond producers? An interesting question, 43% said true, 57% are not of that opinion and say false. So we heard in the comments uh, about brand perception uh, that the Bond production companies should engage fans more and should create more interactivity with fans. So this question as a follow-up is certainly a reminder of that. We come to the usual favorites. Um, who is your favorite James Bond actor? 
33% named Sean Connery, the original James Bond. 23% go with Daniel Craig. 20% go with Roger Moore. 12 with Timothy Dalton. 11 with Pierce Brosnan. And George Lazenby just got one response. I'm sorry, George. 168 responses in total. What is your favorite James Bond film? Now, this I did not visualize <laughs> in um, a nice infographic because uh, I did not have enough uh, points on the infographic to put all the 25 films in there, 24 films in there, No Time to Die, We Can't Rate. But I can tell you the ones that came out on top. The overall best James Bond film, the favorite James Bond film of the, how many responses were given? Let me have a, have a look. 162 responses. R remember, 309 people took the survey, uh, so we went down a lot to 162 responses, but out of these 162, 23%, that's 37 people, voted Casino Royale 2006 to be their favorite James Bond film, followed by Honor Majesty's Secret Service with 10% and Goldfinger with 10%. This is the top three. I would have loved to have more responses on that, but okay, it's the obvious thing and everybody has a different opinion and, and the uh, scales go up and down on that. But who is your favorite Bond film composer? Obviously, John Berry comes out on top with 75 out of 238 responses, followed by David Arnold with 37, then Thomas Newman, composer of Skyfall and Spectre with 8, Bill Conti with 5, George Martin of Live and Let Die with 4, and Eric Serra with the music of GoldenEye with 3. And what about your favorite director? Again, a very clear result with 46 people out of 270 responses naming Martin Campbell as their favorite James Bond director. He helmed GoldenEye and Casino Royale. He's followed by Terence Young with 30 people. Guy Hamilton is favored by 20. Sam Mendes and John Glenn are equal with 19 people favoring them. Louis Gilbert, 13. Peter Hunt, 10. Mark Forster and Michael Apted share two, as well as Roger Spottiswood and Lee Tamahori, who share one person. It's interesting that many people say uh, today is not a good uh, decade for James Bond films, so I asked the question, what do you, do you think? What was the best decade for James Bond films? And a whopping 57% say the 1960s were the best decade, followed by 14% for the 1980s and the 1970s. They're both on 14%. 4% uh, for the 1990s, 3% for the 2000s, and 7% for the 2010s. Last but not least, let's look at some demographics of this survey. We had 95% male participation in this, 2% female, 2% non-binary, and one classified as other. 157 participants gave me their age, out of which 3% were 15 to 19 years old, 14% 20 to 29 years old, 26% 30 to 39, 26% 40 to 49, 20% 50 to 59, and even 10% 60 to 69 years of age. When asked how long you have been a James Bond fan, 169 people responded, 2% of those have been a fan for one to five years, 4% six to nine years, 12% 10 to 19 years, 28% 20 to 29 years, 18% 30 to 39 years, and 24% 40 to 49 years. 12% have been a fan for 50 or more years. That's quite impressive. There you have it. These were the results of the Big James Bond Survey 2021 and I thought this was really fun. So thank you again for your participation. I might do some of these surveys in the future, maybe centered on an individual film or aspects of the franchise. And if you're not too tired after watching this overly long video, there are some outtakes at the end right now because it's not so easy <laughs> filming an introduction with a horse. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and healthy, people, and see you very soon. Bye-bye. My chief analyst and I have gathered the results, and I will present them to you now.
have fun. Welcome to the results video of the Big James Bond survey 2021. <laughs> ow, Lancelot. Three, uh, two, ow. Meep, 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 meep. Ah, three, two, one, go. <laughs> it's hot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the results video of the Big James Bond Survey 2021. My chief analyst and I have gathered the results for you, and they're quite interesting, so let's get right to it. Yes, they are. My uh, chief owl analyst and owl eye have gathered out the results for you and uh, they're quite interesting, so let's get right to it. <laughs> 